In the NFL, it is not uncommon for a player to be a one-hit wonder. To have one season of their career that is significantly better than all the others and then not do anything good afterwards. One of the more famous recent examples of this is Cleveland Browns running back Peyton Hillis. The best season of his career came in 2010, his first with the Browns, where he ran for over a thousand yards and won the cover vote for Madden. In that 2010 season, Hillis ran for 1,177 yards and 11 touchdowns. In the four years of his career following this, he ran for 1,258 yards and only six touchdowns. It happens all the time. A player will get in the right place at the right time, and they will heat up, and they will make plays. But more rare in the NFL is the one-game wonder. This is when a player's best career game happens, and they rarely do anything before or since. A famous example somewhat recently is Jonas Gray of the New England Patriots. In a 2014 game against the Indianapolis Colts, Gray went off for 201 yards and 4 rushing touchdowns. After this, Gray would only put up 91 yards the rest of the season, as after missing a team meeting due to oversleeping, Belichick pulled him out of the lineup. Now, no player wants to be a one-game wonder, but I'm sure if a player was forced to, they would definitely choose that one game to be the Super Bowl. The most famous example of a Super Bowl one-game wonder has to be that of David Tyree. David Tyree was a wide receiver for the New York Giants. He was primarily a backup and a special teams player. In 2007, David Tyree didn't really do much. He had four catches for 35 yards and zero touchdowns. Once the Super Bowl came, however, David Tyree left his mark. Tyree caught his first touchdown of the season to give the Giants a 10-7 lead. Later on in the game, David Tyree, despite playing two more seasons, would make the final catch of his career. That catch was this catch. David Tyree goes into the annals of history as making the helmet catch, one of the most famous moments in NFL history, and it was the final catch he would ever make in the NFL, helping the Giants beat the undefeated Patriots in 2007. If you had to have your career end on one play, you could not ask for a better play than the helmet catch. The thing about David Tyree, though, is that everybody remembers him. Anybody who follows football whatsoever and knows of that game knows that David Tyree was the man who caught the helmet catch. But what if I told you there was a Super Bowl one-hit wonder out there who holds a Super Bowl record that has stood for over 30 years and almost nobody knows of him? His name is Timmy Smith, and today on Kickoff Commentary, I will tell you about him. If I were to ask you who holds the record for most rushing yards in the Super Bowl, you would probably tell me a Hall of Famer like Terrell Davis or Emmett Smith. Maybe Walter Payton. Maybe Marcus Allen or Marshall Falk. But no. The record for rushing yards in the Super Bowl at 204 goes to Timmy Smith. Before we get into Smith's big game, let's talk about how he got there. Timmy Smith was born in Hobbs, New Mexico and attended Hobbs High School where he played football and basketball. He graduated with New Mexico State records for rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. After this, Smith committed to Texas Tech University. Smith was horribly injury prone at Texas Tech, suffering a knee injury in the first game of his junior season, and as a fifth year senior, suffering a fractured foot and ankle during an early season practice. Smith would leave Texas Tech with 292 carries, 1,313 yards, and 8 touchdowns. Despite his injuries and relative lack of production at Texas Tech, Washington still took him in the fifth round of the 1987 NFL Draft. Considering he was buried on the depth chart, he only carried the ball in four separate games in the 87 season. Smith got his first real opportunity in the NFL in the divisional round against the Chicago Bears. Starter George Rogers was not playing well, and backup Kelvin Bryant wasn't either, so Smith was inserted into the game. He responded by putting up 66 yards on 16 carries. Not the best numbers, but decent enough, and Washington would win the game. Smith played a bit better in the conference championship against the Minnesota Vikings, where he put up 72 yards on 13 carries, and Washington advanced to the Super Bowl. These two performances led legendary head coach and NASCAR owner Joe Gibbs to put Timmy Smith into the starting rotation at running back for Super Bowl number 22. This was a pretty insane decision, giving a rookie his first career start in the Super Bowl. Gibbs was unaware of how Smith would respond, so the only people who knew about this decision at first were quarterback Doug Williams and a few assistants. Smith learned that he would be starting in the Super Bowl during the pre-game warm-ups. A lot of players put in Smith's position probably would have cracked under the pressure. It would have been completely understandable. A rookie starting his first game in the Super Bowl. 
Smith responded with a 204-yard, two-touchdown performance as Washington steamrolled Denver 42-10 in the Super Bowl. That record of 204 rushing yards still stands to this day. You may be wondering why you've never heard of Timmy Smith before, considering how interesting his story is. A rookie does nothing in the regular season, shows up in the playoffs, and in his first career start, runs for 200 yards and wins the Super Bowl. That is because nothing after this point would go right for Timmy Smith in the NFL. Following the big game, Smith would enter a contract holdout prior to the 1988 season that caused him to miss off-season workouts and training camp. Once he finally reported, he was 25 pounds overweight. Insert your Kelvin Benjamin jokes here. Smith had lost the starting job by week 8 and did not have a rushing attempt in the final four games of the season. He ended the season with 470 yards and three touchdowns. Washington would release Smith after the 1988 season, and he would not play in the NFL again until 1990 with the Dallas Cowboys. There, he only ran the ball six times for six yards. And that was the end of Timmy Smith's career in the NFL. In 1994, he attempted a comeback with the Baltimore Stallions of the CFL, but was released before the start of the season. And by that point, Timmy Smith's football career was officially over. Smith's regular season career numbers ended like this. 602 rushing yards and three touchdowns. In his postseason with Washington in his rookie year, he put up double the yards and only one fewer touchdown in just three games. The story of Timmy Smith takes an unfortunate dark turn in 2006 as he was arrested for attempting to distribute cocaine and spent 13 months in a federal prison. Thankfully, since then, Timmy Smith has turned his life around and will often speak to youth groups about his incarceration and the mistakes he made. So even though Timmy Smith didn't ever top what happened in that Super Bowl, he at the very least learned from the mistakes in his life and is living very well. And honestly, if your NFL career includes a Super Bowl ring and a Super Bowl record that have lasted for 30 years, then I'd say Timmy Smith turned out just fine.